Okay, good morning. Welcome back to Favaloro Foundation University Hospital. It's an honor to be with all of you again in, in this, uh, for this live transmission for MedStream. I will introduce the team. First, uh, in, on my right, uh, Dr. Carlo Pava, yeah, Dr. Franco, uh, Christian and uh, Matias. Uh, Juan is a technician for the valve. And here is Germán and Mariano. And uh, uh, on the, on, behind the controls are Hernán and Claudio and uh, Gustavo as technicians. But today I would like to thank especially to Dr. Fernando Cura, who is here you know, on my right. Uh, he's, uh, he has a lot of experience with the device that we are going to use today. So he's very welcome here and I thank uh, to him for having here. Good morning, Fernando, and welcome. Thank you very welcome. much, Cacho. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you and with Mets. Okay. Let's uh, introduce uh, the case. Uh, let's go with the, the first slide. Next. Proxima. So she's a 75 years old lady. She suffers from dyspnea. She has a, the following risk factor, hypertension, diabetes, also morbid obesity. With a severe COPD with this uh, finding that you can uh, uh, see there. And she also suffered from venous disease with the deep venous thrombosis uh, two years ago. Next. Uh, in the AKG, she has a normal uh, sinus rhythm with a complete uh, right bundle branch block nothing special about the blood test. The echo doppler unveiled a severe aortic stenosis with a tricuspid, tricuspid valve with an area of 0 0.70, 0 0.7, excuse me, with gradients of 62 and 40 as a mean gradient with a Vmax of 4.0 uh, with preserved left ventricular ejection fraction. Uh, clinicians at the beginning were a little confused about the symptoms, so they ask for a stress uh, test echo, which showed the dyspnea with arterial oxygen desaturation during exercise. So we interpret this uh, due to the severe aortic stenosis, so they send the patient or refer the patient for evaluation. Next, she uh, underwent a coronary angiography in another hospital. She has normal coronary arteries. Unfortunately, the quality is not good enough for showing to you today. So, but we accept the angiography, which is uh, normal. Next. So we did uh, an angio CT. Uh, she has uh, these uh, measurements done at the uh, core lab of uh, the valve center. The annulus measurement was the, with these uh, diameters, 20 and 24.4, with a perimeter derived of 22.7, with an area of uh, 377, with a perimeter of uh, 71. Next. This is uh, the LVOT with a little bit calcium below the uh, left uh, coronary uh, sinus with these uh, measurements at the sinotubular junction that uh, I will show you in the next slide. Next. Proxima. So this is the summary of the measurements, perimeter of 71, perimeter derived, derived of uh, 23, I would say, area of 377 with the LVOT of 24, with the right uh, coronary height of uh, 11, quite 12, and left coronary height of uh, 11.6. Next. Here we can observe the scene of, of Valsalva, approximately 30 millimeters uh, diameters, with sinotumular junction of uh, 30, with a sending out of uh, 38 millimeters. Next. So we were discussing with uh, Dr. Fernando in the morning and we did our own measurements. And here we find the different measurements. You can see the area is 424. Fernando, would you like to comment something about this? Yeah, this is a, a good point to discuss because sometimes we find uh, some discrepancy in between the core lab analysis and our analysis. So it's a good uh, exercise to perform our own analysis just to be sure uh, of which valve needs our patient. So in this case, we have changed it, uh, our mind to uh, use a 24.5 size my valve. Great, great, great. So that's why we usually uh, do uh, our own measurements, uh, although we have the core labs for 80 valves. 
Usually we have an agreement, but sometimes when we are in the borderline for a smaller or a bigger valve, uh, we measure and then uh, we discuss and we decide which valve uh, we are going to use. Next. And, and one point in this special case is that there's no much calcium. Yeah, it's something uh, I will show you oh, okay, next. Okay. So here is the, the osteum height, 11.8 uh, for the right, 11.6 for the for the left, the osteum of the right is uh, quite big. The left is not that big, but for this valve is uh, enough uh, and Fernando agrees on not protecting uh, uh, this uh, coronary uh, osteum. Next. So here is what Fernando was saying. If you want to comment, we have some calcium, but not too much. Not too much. So uh, a very important comment for balloon expandable valves is to have a very accurate measurement of the, of the size. Uh, probably more important than self-expanding technologies. And second, in this case, without too much calcium, uh, better to have a, a good size because we don't want the valve to embolize. Okay, next. So these are the two potential projections for uh, implantation. On the left of the panel, uh, we can see the cast overlap view, which is the, the our standard view for implantation of a, every single valve. It uh, would be right oblique in six degree and caudal inclination of 27. And the coplanar view is gonna be on the left 13 uh, without any kind of caudal or cranial angulation. Fernando, do you have any preference with this device? Well, um... So the library is uh, split in two you know, groups of physicians. Some of us prefer to use the coplanar view. And if we find that the valve, the stent is not uh, coaxial, we move to the cusp overlap view. But of course there are many, and there is a trend to use as you use cusp overlapping for every valve. I think it's a, it's a good, it's a great um, learning point that we have in the few in the last few years. The other issue here is we have an uh, aortic angulation of uh, 57, which is quite uh, important. So I think this is another reason of why we have chosen a balloon expandable valve. Yeah, this is a great point. This uh, valve, as as the other the, the yeah. other balloon expandable valves, they have a deflectable tip of the catheter that is good in some kind of uh, very um, acute angulations. So I think this is gonna be a great example of the uh, advantage of this technology. Next. So these are the vascular, potential vascular axes, um, quite acceptable, not too much tortuosity, good diameter, seven uh, in the common femoral artery on the right side that we have chosen for uh, implantation of the valve. Next, note calcium, the aorta is, uh, I would say quite a stride, nothing or no important angulations there, no significant calcifications. Next. So in summary, it's a quite young lady, 75 with severe aortic stenosis and severe COPD and morbid obesity, and this is a, why the heart team suggested to, to do TAVI instead of uh, surgery here in Argentina that 75 sometimes is not that easy to get approval for health insurance. I don't know if your practice in the hospital something similar. Yeah, it's very similar. It's uh, very hard and I have the heart, the, the heart team this morning and, and it's difficult to have everybody agree with young patients below 80. No. But there's a trend that uh, above 75, it's a very good practice to go for TAVI. Okay, next. So according to this suggestion, we have prepared this patient for transfemoral, and we also going to discuss with Dr. Kura about the direct implantation or predilatation. Next. This is the valve that Dr. Kura has experienced. Fernando, you might uh, yeah, describe. This valve has a, it's a balloon expandable valve. It has a, a low co cobalt chromium uh, technology uh, with a very nice uh, skirt, as you see below, uh, with PET uh, technology. Uh, the, so the valve has a length of about 20, 17 to 21 millimeters. It shortens as we open 
especially in the below uh, portion of the valve. Uh, it has a bovine pericardium leaflet. Um, it's, uh, very, uh, it's very comparable with Edwards. Uh, the only difference is that they have different sizes. Uh, they have in between sizes. They have nine so different sizes. We have. Um... We uh, next. Uh, meanwhile, we can ask uh, the audience if they want to send some question by the chat, so they can be uh, uh, transferred to us, and we can answer, especially myself or, or, or Fernando. So uh, going back to our discussion before the case. According to the core lab, the indication was the, the, the my valve 23. According to our measurements, it was uh, 24.5. Exactly. But uh, with the core lab measurements, it was 23 plus one CC. In our measurement is 24, but uh, nominal, not extra CCs. Exactly. Yeah, we, we know that all this sizing, they have different, we have to take care of different uh, measurements at the amount of calcium. Um, in this case, uh, since the calcium is very low um, and the size, I mean, uh, we are comfortable with a 24.5. And another point, as you mentioned, is to use uh, as a direct tabby without predilatation, which is not very usual with this uh, valve, but this case, I think is a great uh, idea to attempt, at least okay. to, to have a good attempt to go directly. If okay. not, we can predilate. Let's uh, show the introducer set, please, Frank, of bring the, the set to the introductor here. Uh, next, no, next slide, please, it's important. Next, here. Fernando, can you describe, because this is the positioning for the implantation. Yeah, so this is probably the most important part of, the, of this uh, TAVI uh, case. It's gonna be to see the bands you see in the left, the diagram that it has dense and wide bands, uh, three bands in the outflow and then a separation and another band in the uh, aortic portion of the valve. So we have to try to uh, align the light, uh, the less, um, the light line uh, in the, according to the annulus position in the cusp overlap or in the coplanar view. So uh, we are gonna be like 70% in the aortic part, 30% in the LV. And then when we open, uh, we hope to be like 90, 10 or 85, 15. Okay, great. So this is the sheath. Let me explain what we already have done. We, she has uh, previous uh, conduction disturbances. So let's go to, to real life, to the camera one and two. So here we put a femoral uh, introducer uh, for a, a transient pacemaker that we are going to pace in from here. And also we will leave the wire at least for 12 hours uh, to check if any new conduction disturbances yes. uh, would appear. Remember that we have talked talk, uh, talk in last uh, session that previous conduction disturbances are the more important predictor for new or worse or worsening. So we have done a crossover and we have the ancho there. We use uh, a SIM too with the extra stiff uh, terumo wire. Then we advance it, we cross with the O18 wire. We put two proglides here. Here, sorry, and we have uh, left an 11 introducer set because we are waiting for uh, 20 or 25 minutes before uh, starting the procedure. So here is the introducer. Any uh, special characteristic that you want to point sure. out, Fernando? Yeah, this is a expandable sheet, so it, it is 14 as it comes, and then hey, before uh, advancing with the valve, we will um, open with the 18. Uh, French dilator. So it's an expandable uh, sheet, very good. Um, right. And this is the dilator, the dilator that we are exactly. going to use uh, before. Okay, perfect. So Franco, please move here. Uh, so hold the groin. We, uh, sorry, we will introduce this uh, catheter. We exchange the for extra stiff amplex wire. 
So this is very important to, whenever uh, we use an introducer, a large bore introducer, it's important to use a um, um, hard wire, uh, extra support wire. So this is also our practice uh, okay. to be sure okay. that we don't have any problem. Bring the water so we can clean the hands. Well, anyway, then give me the wire first. So it's also important, I think, when we are doing live cases to where we have to wait for some time, it's better to have a smaller sheath so we don't produce uh, ischemia. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. And also, you know, this expandable sheath it doesn't have the same ceiling as any other uh, introducer. So it's good to have it to implant the valve, but not for a long time. Okay. So we are dilated the orifice, the board, the skin, and the orifice. And now we are put the introducer, and also Fernando recommended us to uh, suture the. I mean to fix. Yeah, because you know sometimes the the sheet may come back, and it's better to have it sutured to the skin, in order to avoid that and to keep the, because you don't want to advance the sheath without the dilator. This is very okay. dangerous. So whenever we have to advance the sheath, we have to put a dilator inside. So I have a suture uh, already prepared here. I am tightening. Uh, you are like a surgeon, Cacho. Uh, doing the, yeah, remember, like me, like this, me. I, know, I know it's like to... <laughs> this is the, the house of the surgeons. I had to behave like them. If not, I'm going to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> now we are going to cross uh, the valve. Uh, as usually, we try it from the beginning with a pigtail. If we cannot, we can use the Amplatz uh, catheter. We, we will see how Cacho crosses the valve because he has a special way to Let's cross using the JR. Is that right? A JR? No, a pigtail. Okay. The, oh, the pigtail directly. Uh, I would say that probably in 80% of the cases we are successful in this uh, simple maneuver. You have to take some time. So this is the, very uh, you know that. Uh, why I'm doing this is uh, because at the beginning we have problem with wires, with all the, the wires, and before we have dedicated wires, so we scare about that. So we try to be as less aggressive as we can. So we try to go to the apex of the, the valve there, like something like this. Most of the cases we can, but some days we have to change for the regular technique. Which wire is that? It's a regular J, J wire. Yes. But it's a little bit damaged because we damaged the wire with the angel seal. No, and also, you know, the, the main gradient is 47. So yeah. this is very, very tight. Yeah, maybe we cannot waste too much time. Give me the amplats. We will go with a regular way. Uh, yeah, then don't spend too much time on this. We did it in, in the previous uh, last week. Okay. So let's go with a uh, gear recta. Now we are changed for a straight wire, O35, not hydrophilic. Hello, Nia. Well, dale. Mm -hmm. Tres mil. So as we were waiting a little bit, we add uh, some additional heparin. So. So many people is not uh, doing the working projection with Anjo. Um, but I, I, I think so. sometimes you have some discrepancy in between the... Dale, sí, right oblique. 
Here That's is cool. where we have to take care. And when the catheter jumps, mm -hmm. if the wire is looped, it's okay. If the wire is not looped, we have to be careful. We are yeah. jumping again the wall. Give me the amplats. I will give some loop here yeah. so we can. It's triggering some arrhythmia because, of course, we see yeah. the uh, tip so of we... the catheter touching the LV. So we will be very careful. I think we can start preparing the wire. Fine. Amplats just to change the catheter. Oh, okay. Come on. We use the Leave long J yeah. wire for this. Okay. Now give me the pigtail. And bring the other pigtail. Fernando, how frequent in your center are using, let's see, balloon expandable versus self expandable valves? I would say. Uh, well, that... give, me, give me a second. Yeah. We have to say that uh, we have explained before that in Argentina, some, many times physicians don't decide which device uh, can use because health insurance companies send to us. That, but yeah. beyond that. Yeah. So, so beyond that, if I, if I have to choose. I probably would choice uh, for a balloon expandable in 70% of cases and self expandable in 30%. In, in our, in Argentina, um, we have uh, availability of, of my valve and Edwards. Uh, we are very comfortable with my valve. So we have been using for the last couple of years. Um, second valve probably, you know, in between accurate and Metronic and Evolute, uh, but as you say, many many times we cannot choice, so we have to uh, adapt the valve uh, to the patient, which is better to Mostrame go la inverse. Let's explain to the audience. So, the health insurance uh, send the device that you might have to use it. If you want to change it, you can't, but you have to do a long errand, so you have to balance. How much time you have to wait and how much different would be your selection? Exactly. Do you agree on that? Exactly. Yeah, advantages, of course, of balloon expandable valve is the rate of pacemaker. Um, and and that helps us to discharge the patient the next day in the majority of cases. Uh, although some cases we can discharge the patient the same day. Uh, so it's a uh, in that way, it's a re reduce also hospitalization. How? Uh, how do you select patients for same day discharge? Well, it was only a very Franco, short uh, experience of, of six cases uh, up to today. But I was talking with people in, from the US that they are in some cases in some hospitals in Dallas, they are discharging 20% of cases the same day. So I am more motivated. So first of all, a new expandable valve has to be second, or maybe the patient that has a, a pacemaker from before. The, the patient should not have any um, electrical abnormalities and should have all, uh, a very good um, follow-up. Very nice curves of the hemodynamic. Yes, you you can see there that we have uh, almost ninety peak gradients. Wow, tremendous! Wow, this is I very hope we high. can cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think to change to to I would, I would change. Okay. I would change. Listen, I would change. Being young is changing your mind yes. when yes. it's necessary. Give me the uh, 18 eighteen millimeter balloon. Eight. 18. Uh, yeah, because you know sometimes you have a strategy, but you don't need to keep very strict. You have to see how patient believe, uh, 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 you know, behaves, and and see. Now I see the calcium. Of course, the calcium is not much, but it's nice and I very mean, tight. I, I, so the, I, I. But vamos a la posición. No, vamos primero. Let's uh, go first a la esa. Sí. Sí, dale. So working projection. 
Let's now we will do both. Okay, great. So we can see if we have both uh, nice uh, working projections. So first of all, we go with CASP overlapping. Okay. Which is uh, eight, eight RAO and CODAL 27. Uh, let me check. I think it's a very nice uh, yeah. project. So maybe we can do another one because uh, we have a lot of water in the on, on in the system. Okay, Beautiful. let's go to the, to, uh, to the other. Vamos a la otra, a la izquierda. Let's go to the left. Supposed to be the so the view, view. We should see, of course, the the uh, uh, right cusp in the middle. How much? Uh, era? Okay, thirteen and zero. Uh, one more. Left. One more. Okay. 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 Centralize, please. There we will see. Maybe I can do an answer a little bit higher so we can see the three cars much better. No, it's not. It's not an, a good view for Coplanar. I'm sure if we should, you know, keep going, but it's not, I think the right and the, and the non corner are very much in the same yeah. place. Yeah. So probably, uh, so let's go more AP. Yeah. More, más, más, uh, AP. AP. Hey, probably, maybe a, a AP zero zero would be. Mm -mm. Here, this is the coplanar view. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, um, you cannot see very well the right, but we can see from here. There, there, there exactly. you can see yeah, the right. Yeah, it's yeah. Not in the middle. Yeah, very. So it's exactly. zero, at zero, zero. Good view. So when bulb is ready, we are going to pre dilate. Is ready the bulb? Okay. Yeah, he's we preparing the balloon because we were planning to go directly. So now we changed our mind. Uh, what about your uh, ceiling, Fernando? I know you use uh, only one ProGlide in most of the cases. Yeah. Tell I mean, us about your experience. In the last, uh, I would say, probably five years, we have been using only one ProGlide in every case, uh, regardless the size of the of the introducer. And we are very happy with that, um, with that um, strategy. Of course, it's less expensive, first of all. Secondly, uh, we believe that we have less um, okay, uh, no. uh, pure you are ready, complications. We'll Sometimes Dale, with the two proglides, we found Help him with uh, the, some yeah. uh, femoral stenosis. So using one proglide is, is very rare to have any, any stenosis. So one proglide, but has to be um, ultrasound guiding uh, femoral puncture. The other difference uh, to Oscar is that we use the radial approach as the um, second as the yeah. secondary uh, axis. So we use radial and femoral. We don't leave any wire and we don't control the femoral axis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and geographically, yeah. no uh, ultrasound. So it's just clinically, if we see that if we have a good ceiling, we just remove the wire at the end when we close the ProGlide. If, we, if it doesn't uh, close, we can use a second ProGlide at that time. It's yeah. not very comfortable to use a second ProGlide after. When uh, we have started to use uh, one single ProGlide, but in combination with the angio seal. So what the, we usually do in these cases is to close the first probe line under uh, the uh, over the wire and with the six or five French introducer set. So if uh, everything is almost okay, we introduce uh, the angio seal, we pull the angio seal completely, the, the tighten of the knot of or the thread of the uh, the probe line, 
and then we close the angio seal. Interesting. So a combination of both. Uh, I have learned in Europe you from my before? friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I learned from my friend Marco Nocci in Slovenia. Okay, good, good. As always, we learn from each other, well, and it's good to. This is uh, the importance of live cases. I'm going to Franco. Uh, and why? Uh, but particularly it's... in this lady with a bit of large uh, yes. groin, I think it's a good idea to use you know, to provide because it's not easy to realize that the patient is bleeding. Yeah, we have had, vamos a la oblicua derecha. We have had cases, uh, actually in a live case, uh, that everything was okay here in the surface, Except. but there was a retroperitoneal bleeding, uh, which is not that easy to see in such a huge lady. Mostrame la punta. Show me the, yeah. So there we inflate the balloon and I don't remember what else. Mostrame que se vea la punta y, uh, okay, perfect. So now he's, you know, this this the wire in the... part of the intervention is very important to very close uh, and meticulously uh, put the the wire. Uh, it's a confida wire. Is that correct? Yes, it's a confida. I showed in the, in the last case, but uh, I am trying to to take the advantage of having you here and asking you question about your your technique and so on. Because uh, we have explained that we usually reshape the, the confida or the safari for a smaller uh, loop, distant loop, and also a secondary vent, especially for self expandable. It's uh, much easier to retrieve the nose cone when you have this, uh, okay. this secondary vent. Yeah, so, I think you, how you put the second. Also, you make it smaller? The... Yeah, yeah. So we try to, to make a very small distal uh, uh, loop. Okay. Here probably was a little bit deformated, but so uh, let's go, people. 180. What? So this is 18 balloon. This is 18 balloon. Yeah. Is the how is the name? Inflation. Mammoth. Mammoth Listo. balloon. So we are pacing the patient. Okay. Stop pacing. Uh, stop. Uh, the, the cortar. Stop. Para marca paseo. Cortar marca paseo. Cortalo. Cortalo del todo. Good. Yes, perfect. So, good uh, shape of the pressure and, and of the balloon. Que no se venga por atrás la guía. Dejarlo bien. Yeah. So, Juan is going to bring the ball. Carlos is trying to leave the wire as distal as he can. So, to have enough space for the nose cone. So, we are doing Do you okay. Have the... The introducer, have you dilated with 18? Uh, no, yet. So we, ha so we have to, the first, of all, first of all, the dilator. Yeah. So we will, some people doesn't expand uh, the dilator with the 18, uh, as we have uh, talking yesterday with a group, but we always um, increase the size of the introducer with the 18, so the valve can, uh, navigate okay. easier. Teneme el sheet, Franco. Okay, thank you, Fernando. Yeah. Actually, she felt something when we introduced this big. A good, I did something. Yeah. A great help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, your help is great. Let's go here. We will check the valve uh, before uh, going out of the introducer. Okay. Just to make sure that it's in between the balloon. So go. Mostrame abajo. Repeat. Un poquito más. Okay. okay, there, there. You see the tip of the introducer no, the, there. The, mostrame que se vea el introductor. No, no it could be even so, close. People, escuchame a mí. Soltar. Ahí. Ahí. So we can see both the sheath and the wire. Right. So we'll see, let's see. So the, as you see, this is a check that the, the valve is in the middle of the balloon because you have the points uh, that are very well distributed. So this is a good check out. And now we know that we are fine. Right. So probably we can describe something here. First, we don't have to uh, load the valve as we had to do with the, exactly. the other balloon expandable valve. And also the sheath is a deflectable sheath in the same way. Is that correct? Exactly. 
And do we have to pull here or something like this before delivering the valve or, or no? We, no, no, we only have to advance. Okay. And before uh, crossing the arch, we have to deflect. Okay. 50%. Otra me arriba. So at this point, okay. we deflect uh, 50%. Now we are deflecting. And deflecting a little bit more. Yeah. To cross the wall. And now we are almost in. Great, great. This is Let's how you zoom. Should... Yes, uh, Guarda. So now we will pay attention to the position. Uh, mini test, mini, Franco. Pero te, andate a, a la proyección. Vamos a la proyección de trabajo, oblicua so derecha. We will go always to the working projection, which here in the cast forward lap, I think we're a little bit deep. We are deep, exactly. So here no. we are in the, yeah. I mean, darkest second uh, band. Let's do Angel, just to Let, make I sure. will show you. Angel? See. Yeah, it is l low. I would go like one millimeter okay. above that. So you rather choose the white bundle exactly or, or the or, or yeah. the or the dense just okay uh probably let, there. okay good let's check yes so we will have a shortening mm -hmm. from you the, have deflected yeah yeah probably i would uh take Completed. out the reflection or you want to to keep it uh we can no i think it's worse yeah just to understand how it's going to open. No, I think it's there. Okay. We can pull the wire a little bit. Oh, it go below. Eh? It, it yeah, is. yeah. Because I pull the wire. Even. You're pushing the wire just to take the valve. Yeah. Good. Good. That's right. good. I think it's right. there. Test. Okay. I it like is, it, Fernando. It's a good there. place. It is yeah? a good place. Yeah. Okay. Now we can leave the pigtail there. It's, do you agree? Yeah. yeah, you can leave it. Yeah. So second, we will start pacing at 180, 180. Ojo con la Nora, 180, rápido. Sí, 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 está perfecto. 180, ¿qué pasó con el pacing? Ok, now go. Go, all, 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 all. all. Okay, okay. And pushing a little okay. bit, deflate. Perfect. Stop. Very nice. Very nice. So cortar la cortar el marca paso. Give me the amplats. Wire. Marca paso a 50. I think it was a great implantation. We see some change in the QRS. The ECG. Yeah, some enlargement. Yeah. But um, the position I see the is pressure, high. The pressure went up to five. Uh, so it's, it's a great, usually Mini we test. improve test. The, the pressure up to five. Yes. Now it's good to uh, take the balloon out. Yeah. To assess. Okay, so I will retrieve some. And now yes. we can do an Pressure is fine. Uh, we have a nice diastolic pressure also. Let's go. I think it's beautiful. 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 Foreign action are perfect. The I think this is a great is... view because there is uh, no parallax. Let's so... go to the AP view. Okay. Beautiful. Anterior. Even okay. you can you can pull the wire. You don't need to. Do you, I like to measure the gradient. Oh Will yeah, like good it? good idea, yeah. good idea. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can uh, measure the gradient first, and then we Let's can. Let's do that. Please retrieve card or hold it the groin. Give me uh, because we have to pull hard. I don't want to. To her dog, so this is I mean, how easy 
the valve is. Uh, the, the balloon expandable valve, especially this valve has uh, good advantages in terms of um, aortic regurgitation, the AR, has a very good ceiling. And in, in these good sizes, uh, you, it's very rare to have any gradient. It's in a moment. Probably it's not a good valve, or an expandable technology in small annulus that you, in that, those cases, I prefer to have a supraannular position of valve uh, that that is in a self-expandable technologies. Let's go for zero again. The, which is the second pressure? The second let, pressure? let me check the zeros before. So one is LV yeah. and, and the other one is the Aorta. radian? No, 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 no. Oh, aortic. aortic, great. No gradient at all. Very nice diastolic, very nice notch uh, indentation. Beautiful. Uh, so now we can pull the wire. Of hemodynamics. Give me the, the shape wire. And we can also ask for echo because we still have at least 10 minutes more. Yeah. This room. Fortunately, Fernando, you come so we could talk a little bit. Sure. Because sure. last week I was in uh, too, um, I mean, Talking faster than I should. So oh, there was well. remaining time. That it was free, so I. But to, this is a good point to discuss. Dr. Samir, uh, regret me. Uh, oh, you okay. were too fast. So, <laughs> so another point let me, let me to discuss go. is how long Pero are poquito. today the Pero Tavis? And Tavis uh, have, are now a very short craneal. time uh, for the procedure. So usually, is one hour, one hour, no, fifteen al minutes al uh, for all the setup and everything. No error at all. At so all. this is the, the well, you, uh, ahora sí. thing. Ver el eco? And the position is great. It's like uh, three millimeters below. You have a great access to coronary arteries because the cells are very large uh, in the top, as you see. Now we can see what uh, she can see on the echo. So she, what is she going to check? So she's going to check, first of all, to uh, the gradient, the amount of AR, mitral valve function, and, and if they have any uh, pericardial effusion. Uh, effusion. Uh, okay. Trae el arco? Trae el. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mira. So one question, Fernando. To retrieve the sheet, do you put the introduction oh, yeah, before? Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Always put the 18, the larger, the larger. Uh, dilator. This is a good point to here. Could yeah. you um, turn on the lights on the, so we can see the future a little bit better? Not this, not this one, because uh, if not, there is a lot of saturation on the camera. This one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I think, you know, in this kind of patients, you know, 10 years ago, we have sent it, this patient to surgery. Uh, you know, the follow up, how the patient feels after the intervention. So this is seen? something that. Uh, that is a great okay. advantage for medicine in general. Perfect. So no leak, only a seven millimeter uh, gradient. Podemos retirar. Mean, mean gradient seven? Yeah. Good. Excellent. The usual. Yeah. No the AR. Oh, here we have some problem because the 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 hole is too deep. So it's very difficult to go down. Uh, libera un poquito. Okay, you can see that it's almost the whole proglide inside the skin. So we will might have to inflate the balloon here. Trate un balón de... Sí. 
So what, what he is doing is inflating the balloon uh, that is coming from that groin yeah. to do hemostasis. Yeah, because during the deep. futuring. Mostrame abajo. So we still have the wire there. Probably we should retrieve the wire. Okay. Or we can try to put the anxious seal also. Uh, give me an anxious seal. If we can go with the anxious seal, we can put an eight French anxious seal because it's too deep where we are. Just to make sure. Yeah. Good. Before going off, yeah. thank you, Cacho, yeah. for inviting me. It was a pleasure to do this live case together. No, it's our pleasure having you here. So maybe you can comment your experience with this valve. Uh, the yeah, case we, that you have done here, your proctoring. Thank you. So we have uh, almost 100 valves. So I think it was 85, 86. Um, this, um, you know, the rate of pacemaker is, is less than 10%. Um, we haven't seen any uh, very important, um, you know, complication. We have uh, a couple of uh, ARs that were not due to the valve, but more for the positioning. So we have to make sure that the positioning of the valve is correct. It's probably the most important uh, moment of the intervention is to have a good, um, you know, fluoroscopic view of the valve parallel to the annulus mm -hmm. and see the position. The rest of the intervention Comprime has poquito. become no, no, no. a very Comprime. easy and um, simple procedure with a very low uh, mortality. Um, so, we have been using cerebral protection okay. in some, you know, in, in a, I would say a third of cases, this is another point to discuss well, if we comprime. have to be, believe in the trials or, or in the experience. The um, but we are very happy uh, with the procedure, with the um, rate of complications and how this intervention is growing. So we have improvement, but we still have bleeding. I think in the it is too distal from the skin due to the obesity, and that's why probably the suture is not going perfect to the place. So we will inflate the balloon there. We will check it if we have bleeding. So you're going with a seven seven millimeters balloon? Yeah. yeah. So the same size of the okay. common femoral. So we had to see. We comprime a poquito. Tenemos que revertir the parina del. So we are giving protamine to reverse the effect of heparin. And probably, sacan la mano. No. Le podemos hacer un poquito más porque le hicimos heparin hace poco. Y if we don't have ceiling, I think we have to compress and it's going to be okay. We'll see the EKG, how it is in the next few hours. Many times the left bundle block that we have now reversed uh, with the time, but we will see. So far, the, it is a sinus rhythm. The PR is uh, you know, short. Only The only change is uh, left bundle block. So here we will leave the balloon for three minutes. In case uh, we have bleeding, uh, we can think about to put a covered stent. So this is the patient that we never think about surgery because she's too big. The, the possibility of having complication with surgery is very high, lymphocele, infections. We have sure. had experience, so it's much better to deploy, to deploy a covered stent and finish the procedure and the patient for sure is going to uh, go very yeah. well. Now, now, what kind of cover stent if you have to use? For mm -hmm. this patient, such a uh, patient is uh, very easy to put a balloon expandable stent. 
because for self-expandable stent, we have to use the nine contralateral sheath, nine French. Mm -hmm. So with this uh, seven French, we can cross over. We can put a, um, a, a sheath, a crossover sheath, and over this uh, 018 wire or the 035 wire, whatever wire, we can deploy the balloon, the cover balloon stand. We can do the test with the sheath, and for sure it's going to be okay. Good. So, okay. At the end, what we are showing here is uh, uh, the TAVI, uh, I mean, field still need development of closure devices. Yeah, this is a good point. Valves have been uh, developed faster than closure devices. We only have very few. We don't have Manta here in Latin America, but to be honest, I don't know if there is a huge difference between suture base and plug base uh, devices. Yeah, devices. yeah, yeah, that's a good point too, especially in these very obese patients. So from the echo point of view, you probably have seen that the, the P gradient was 15 by echo, seven the mean with a good a, a valve area and not a re reverse at all. Well, what, um, have, what regimen yeah. of anticoagulation or antiplated regimen are you gonna use to discharge the patient tomorrow? Oh, uh, excellent question. I don't have a proper answer. We are using the adapt, but to be honest, it's probably by default. If the patient is under EF, of course, uh, anticoagulation and probably nothing else. If the patient have a stent, uh, clopidogrel, or uh, usually clopidogrel in these very old patients, plus anticoagulation if uh, under EF or dapped with aspirin if it, on, on normal renal uh, uh, function. Uh, sign. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, and then, okay, if we are on dapped, when we stop it? Probably at three months, we stop and, okay. really? and change. Yeah, okay. but not sure. I have to tell you that this is not something not completely sure. It's, it's physician dependent, I would say. Yeah, of course, uh, we are following some consensus. The consensus has changed it. The trial comparing aspirin uh, compared to dual antiplated therapy are beautiful. Beautiful. No bleeding at all. So guys, our job is done here. Dr. Carlos Fava is gonna fix the, the wire of the pacing for uh, uh, 12 hours at least, and we will pull out the, or withdraw the, the contralateral sheath. Quite Franco, although we, have, we don't have a bleeding, we still compress probably for 10 minutes, yeah. uh, additional 10 minutes. Good, excellent. It's just safety measures. And Go Carlos is gonna suture the skin. Uh, you are uh, released. Really? Thank you so, so oh, much. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Uh, and you Beautiful are very yourself. welcome wherever you can. And I move to the other room. I have enough you know, travel there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much for the invitation. Uh, in, in the other lab is Dr. Lev waiting for me. Chicos, nos vemos. Gracias.